Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to show a few techniques for modeling. Rendering often occurs in the early phases of a project and overmodeling at this stage is to be avoided. All of the stock Vectorworks object types already have deep support for texturing and can be set up for rendering so that no additional time is spent assigning materials. Here's a small BIM project with a two-story building and a terrain model. You can see the wall styles used in the resource manager. Now, each of these walls are story bound and have been set up to use class textures for each of their components. Since we're assigning RenderWorks textures through each component's class, it's easy to change these textures for all walls that use the same class. I'm going to change the plaster material for some brick by choosing the texture from the class resource pop-up. Immediately the walls change. You've probably noticed that the brick texture is patterned with some fascia running across the facade. While on the first floor the texture sits perfectly, for the ground floor walls we need to help it along a little. You can change a texture's alignment easily for each wall with the Attribute Mapping tool. Just select the wall, choose the Attribute Mapping tool and drag the texture so it aligns with the wall openings. So, instead of modelling the brick pattern, using a texture is easy and has full support for wall styles and a BIM workflow. Here's another example. Instead of modeling the gray facade elements, you can simply map them as a texture and use the attribute mapping tool to align with wall openings. Let's zoom in on a detail here. You've already seen quite a bit about grass and whilst it would neither be possible to model it nor advisable, some detail may well benefit from actual 3D objects. The higher grass in the foreground was imported from an online library and is used as a foreground accent. Foreground objects often justify a little extra modelling while objects further away from the viewer require fewer details. In one of the upcoming videos I will show how importing geometries from various online sources can actually reduce the modelling required for standard objects, such as these glasses for example. This wood carving was also downloaded but it's not a 3D object. What we're looking at is a texture that uses displacement to model the ornament. You can see how the headboard's top is actually defined just by the texture. So, how can we use displacement textures on just parts of an object? RenderWorks has full support for decal textures, which can be overlaid on top of the base texture. Decals are not visible in OpenGL, but can be edited just like base textures with the attribute mapping tool. When you finish positioning the feature, you need to switch to RenderWorks for the result to become visible. This is the grayscale image used for the displacement. When you model for rendering, you will get best results if you model the objects like they're built. I want to look at the ropes and the wheel in this example. Let's start with the wheel. By right-clicking inside the viewport, you can get to the design layer. Vectorworks will keep the view aligned to that of the viewport, and you can click through your groups to get to the objects you want to edit. As you can see, the wheel is actually made up of separate segments. That's how the wheel will actually be built. If it was made up of one sweep or path extrude, the wood texture would run across it from one end to the other. When you use individual segments, you can rotate the texture easily by using the slider provided in the render tab of the object info palette. So, while manufacturer objects will be modeled to a higher level than decoration items, in some cases even the entourage will need some tweaking. This telephone was imported but its receiver cord was in the wrong place to fit the scene. Similarly, the wall socket was missing and had to be added and put in the right place. These items were modelled to complement the imported objects. This lamp from one of my earlier videos was completely modelled in Vectorworks. I wanted it to look like the lamp in this wonderful work of Spanish artist Juan Siguria. The wall socket is downloadable from grabcad.com and again the cord was hand modelled. Since we've seen ropes and cords so much, I'll share with you just one of the many modeling techniques that Vectorworks powerful 3D toolset has in store. So let's look at how to model a rope or spiral cord for rendering. The good news up front, you don't actually need to model the spirals. All you need is the path you want the rope to follow. Use a polyline or any other object that would be eligible for path extrudes too. Then click on model, then 3D power pack and create helix spiral. Enter the number of turns and radii and click OK. As you can see, the spiral now coils around the path. To make a cable or rope, you need to duplicate the spiral in place and then change the duplicate start angle to 180 degrees. Next, zoom in to see the starting points. Then, draw a circle with the same diameter as the radius of the spiral. In this case, that's 20 mm. Then, select your spiral and circle and go to Model, then Extrude Along Path. 
except the dialogue and you have one strand of the rope. Repeat this for the second strand. Next, apply the rope texture by double-clicking it in the Resource Manager and rotate it so the fibres appear twisted as in real rope. Repeat and you're done. Let's have another look at the finished design. By the way, in this case, if you thought that there must be a similarly elegant way to model the knot, I have some bad news too. It's manual blood, sweat and tears. Well, that's all I have time for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.